Welcome to episode 22 of PVTV, where we talk all things solar. On today's episode, we are looking at blackout protection, what it is, what it does, and we're comparing a stack of inverters to see the different levels of blackout protection across solar inverter ranges. Ross, what is blackout protection? So blackout protection is the ability for your inverter and battery system to supply power to your home uh, when the grid power cuts out. So a blackout essentially. Yeah, and there's, um, so when the ha home loses power, your solar inverter is going to be able to take power from the battery essentially, That's or your right. battery inverter, I should say, yep. and supply that house during a blackout and keep the lights on, keep the power points on, fridges, freezers, and things like that. That's now, it. there's uh, a few different uh, specs when it comes to blackout protection, Ross. So get, the first one is continuous power versus peak power. These are the categories we're going to be looking at for the inverters. So just so you know, we're going to explain them quickly. So continuous versus peak, Ross, what does that mean? So continuous power is how much power the battery, sorry, the inverter can supply continuously um, without interruption. Peak power is how much power can it supply for a short amount of time in a high burst. So if you turn on like, for example, a water pump or, or a high um, power item, mm -hmm. um, how much quick power can the inverter give to you for, to, to get that thing going? Yeah, so continuous is how much power I can put out continuously. Peak is if if it needs to spike, a yep. spike current. Okay, cool. Uh, the second thing we'll be looking at is switch over time. So what's switch over time, Ross? Switch over time is how long it takes the inverter to actually realize that the grid has turned off mm -hmm. and activate your blackout protection. Yep, and uh, whether or not it's UPS compliant yeah, is a so, factor in that. Yep, so I don't think UPS has an actual compliance figure, but it's considered if it can switch over less than 20 milliseconds, it's considered safe enough to to uh to for computers and, and sensitive equipment to not turn off. And that's what you what is UPS? And then? that's uninterrupted uninterrupted power supply. Uninterruptible uninterrupted power supply. Yep. So in the changeover period, when there's a blackout, the battery kicks in. UPS essentially means there's no lag time, it's instant. Yep. And that's a feature that some of these uh, yep. battery inverters have. Um, we're also looking at water pumps and startup current. Yeah, so just to give a bit of context to that peak power. Um, uh, equipment like water pumps and motors, when they start up, they use they draw a huge amount of current to get to, for a split second. Um, and if the inverter doesn't have a good peak um, output for a couple of seconds, it can actually trip that inverter and turn the whole thing off. Even if it's a small water pump, say a 500 watt water pump, um, it could it could uh, spike at six times that, so you know 3,000 watts or more, and that'll trip out an inverter if it doesn't have a good peak output. Great, so when we're talking about continuous power and peak power, it's important to know that appliances use power. Yep. So lights, uh, everything in your house uses power. And when that exceeds the power of, this, uh, of your solar battery, it'll actually trip it out in a blackout, even if you have blackout protection. So when we're looking at continuous power, we're looking at how much the battery can put out continuously in a blackout, and peak is how much it can spike out. Yeah. But if it exceeds these two levels, it, it will potentially trip the battery and turn off to protect the battery and to keep it safe. Correct, yeah. Awesome. Now, what are the inverters we'll be looking at today, Ross? So today we're going to look at a Goodwe hybrid inverter. We're going to look at a SunGro, SunGro's new SH5K-30 hybrid inverter, uh, the new Fronius Gen 24 5 kilowatt hybrid, an SMA Sunny Boy storage, a Tesla Powerwall 2, and um, our own Skybox. Awesome. And when we're looking at these things, Ross, I think it's important to make the distinction. These aren't solar batteries. No. They're solar inverters. Yeah, so these are all inverters. So you, so you can put different batteries with these inverters, um, but we're gonna be looking at what the inverter is capable of today. So um, even though batteries might have their own different specs mm. and different um, charge and discharge rates, we're gonna look at what the inverters can actually do for, for the home. Wonderful. Let's start off with the Goodwe. Yeah, so the Goodwe um, it has a continuous supply of 3,600 watts. Um, it, do it doesn't say that it has any peak supply, so I think the 3,600 watts is just continuous. If you go over that 3,600 for even half a second, it'll most likely trip out because um, it has no peak power output. Um, but interestingly enough, the Goodwe actually has a switch over time of less than 10 milliseconds, which means mm -hmm. it can actually be used for a UPS um, system if you wanted to use it 
uh, to keep some computers or something like that powered, um, the Goodby would be good for that. So UPS, so no lag time. Um, if the power goes out, your computer would stay on, for example, because it's instant. So yep. that's a feature of the Goodwe. Yeah. However, it does have 3,600 watts of continuous power and we believe the same peak power because it's not specified. Yeah, so the- um, it, it's probably not good for things like water pumps or if you wanted to use it um, in sort of regional areas where you might have a few water pumps that mm-hmm. turn on during a blackout. Um, the 3,600 watts with no peak power, it's probably not going to be sufficient. Mm-hmm. Now, just before we continue, Ross, as a quick snapshot, you're saying 3,600 watts might not be sufficient. What's Because we're going to be talking a lot about watts of continuous and peak power, what's, say, 1,000 watts uh, good for? Just so everyone has a ballpark of what you can do with 3,600 watts of backup from your battery. It's a, it's a good point because 3,600 watts is actually quite a lot of power. Mm-hmm. Um, so to say it might not be sufficient for a water pump might, might sound a bit crazy, but... Um, a thousand watts uh, a hairdryer mm-hmm. is, is usually around a thousand watts. Um, toaster about two thousand watts. Uh, at, look, a high like a gaming PC is probably around five hundred watts. Mm-hmm. So that's why this inverter is, is probably okay for a gaming PC. Um, mm-hmm. But where it uh, falls short is in that peak supply, uh, peak demand is that when a for example, let's say a six hundred small six hundred watt water pump or something turns on. For, for a second, it can spike up to four, four and a half thousand watts. And it's going to exceed that 3,600. 3,600, 3, yeah. Awesome. The next inverter we'll be looking at is the... The SunGrow. Um, one of uh, our favorite hybrid inverters to install. The What's the model, Ross? SH5K-30. SH5K. So it's their, it's their new one. A uh, really good inverter, built-in DCI isolators, built-in blackout protection, all in, in the inverter. Um, 3,000 watts continuous output actually has a peak of 6,000 watts for mm. 10 seconds um, and a switch over time of less than 20 seconds. So it's not UPS compliant, but it has a, a nice little 6,000 watt peak uh, for 10 seconds. So, That's handy. Um, yeah, so water pumps and that, probably, it'd probably be okay. With some? Water pumps? With some, with some, definitely. And, and, yeah. and how long is that spike time for? 10 seconds. 10 seconds of spike. So that's enough to start up a water pump. Yeah, so it's that's in, plenty, in yeah. a blackout. Yeah. Awesome. And um, what's after that? What are we looking at next? Um, so the next we'll look at Fronius's new Gen 24, mm-hmm. uh, five kilowatt hybrid. So Fronius, really good brand, super good quality. Uh, uh, it's got a 5,000 watt continuous output. Um, now they didn't, st- I looked through the data sheet, couldn't find any numbers on its peak output. So I'm just gonna assume it's the 5,000 watts is just a continuous output. Um, so if you do go over that 5,000, it potentially will hmm. trip. Its switch over time is stated as less than 90 seconds. So it's it's quite a long switch over time. It could hmm. be up to a minute with the Fronius, uh, which means it's not UPS compliant. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yep. And the next inverter we'll be looking at is the is the SMA Sunny Boy Storage 5.0. So mm-hmm. the five kilowatt Sunny Boy Storage, um, five kilowatts continuous output, a six point three kilowatt peak output, um, and this is pretty good. The peak output actually can last for up to a minute, so mm-hmm. it can run at six point three kilowatt for up to a minute. So um, not only pumps, but if you were to put a hair dryer or, or mm-hmm. some sort, or even a toaster or something on for for that um, within that minute, it'll actually get you through. Um, switch over time, less than 20 seconds. So again, it's not UPS compliant. And fi- so it's 5,000 watts continuous. Yeah, 5,000 watts continuous. Yeah. And the next uh, inverter we're looking at is the... So the next we'll take a look at the Tesla Powerwall 2. So this is a battery as well. Yeah, so this is the battery and the inverter all in one. So it's, an, um, it's, it's the all in one unit. Um, and Tesla's got some pretty impressive numbers on their data sheet. I've heard different things about people and real life um, what it actually does in reality. Uh, but according to the data sheet, this is what it does. It's got 5,000 watts continuous output, a peak of 7,000 watts. So that's for t- but only for 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. So still okay, that'll get you, that'll get most people through some spike currents for most things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's switch over times, uh, mixed opinions um, that I've found is that it's it's stated as around 25 to 35 milliseconds. So it's, it's super fast. Mm-hmm. Um, but UPSs generally need less than less than twenty, so maybe maybe not. It'll it'll work for a UPS. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so that's a fifty fifty on that one. Yeah, and we're seeing quite a wide a wide range here. So we're seeing some inverters yeah. capable of you know instant changeover during a blackout, so you won't even notice that you've had a blackout in some sense. Um, and then others take you know uh, almost up to a minute. Yeah, yeah. It's quite interesting. Yeah. So you really got to um, mm-hmm. you've got to work out what works best for you. Mm-hmm. If you being UPS compliant is not a big 
uh, deal for you, then mm. it's no use looking at those inverters that can can do UPS. If yeah. spike power is something you need, then have a look at an inverter with a good spike peak power. Yeah, so you want to consider whether it's UPS, what the continuous output is, potentially what the spike current is, especially if you've got things like little pumps yeah. um, in the home. Now, would that include pumps that are in your aircon and your fridge and your freezer? Yeah, so pumps and motors. So yeah. you probably don't, we probably don't realize a lot of um, things around the home can have um, different pumps and motors. And again, the hairdryer has a little motor in it. That's mm. a little startup current. So that's another thing that can easily trip out a thousand watt hair dryer starts up at you know maybe six seven thousand even watts a split system a split or second, a split system split or something second. like if it's got some sort of rotary yeah. motor in it it's it's got a pump in it um, a motor in it so yeah and you could for sure and you say you're backing up your home it would be possible to because you can select i mean you've got say a budget on these systems of say three thousand to five thousand watts you can actually select by rewiring your switchboard usually yeah. what you actually back up in a blackout so as to not trip the battery by exceeding that yeah. um, and making the most of that, of that um, available power, so to speak. Yeah. 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 Awesome. What are we looking at next? Um, so the last one we'll look at is our own Skybox. So the Skybox has a 5,000 watt continuous output. It has a peak output of 9,000 watts um, and that can last up to 30 seconds. Now, um, that can actually last a little bit longer as mm -hmm. long as it stays cool um, and the conditions are right, but uh, nine kilowatt, 30 seconds is, is, is stable. Um, mm -hmm. So switch over time, less than 20 milliseconds. So it is UPS compliant, so that's super fast. Um, so yeah. Yeah, now there's one more thing we haven't discussed across this range of uh, battery inverters and that is off-grid capabilities. Yeah. So. I'm sure there are people watching this video who are wanting to go fully off the grid with batteries. You know, cut the grid indefinitely or at least be able to run your home off the grid indefinitely uh, should you choose. Now, not all these inverters can do that, Ross. So even though they've got a budget of power, uh, of continuous and peak power, which we understand, they can't all run off the grid continuously. They need the grid to come back at some stage. Yep. So maybe explain a little bit more about that and which of these inverters are, we can go through them one by one, are off-grid compliant. Let's start off maybe by saying what uh, what makes something off-grid and something not off-grid compliant. Um, well, I would say it's just, it's a, it's mostly a design choice by the manufacturer um, that it's it's easier to design a, an inverter that can be used on the grid because the grid is usually a fairly stable supply of power when we're talking voltage and frequency and mm -hmm. things like that. You know what you're gonna get. We have a, a country standard. And so um, you know that the inverter will always get here in Australia, 230 volts, 50 Hertz, up and down a mm -hmm. little bit, but um, that's, you know, you know you're gonna get that. When you're designing for off-grid, you need to allow for the fact that it might have uh, all sorts of inputs. So a generator, for example, mm -hmm. can range from the frequency can be sort of all over the place. Mm -hmm. The voltage can be 200 volts, it can mm -hmm. be 240 volts, it can be all over. So the, um, the inverter needs to be able to handle that variation in input mm -hmm. um, and then still be able to convert that into usable clean 230 volt or whatever the supply is on the output. So yeah. um, not all of them can do that and some of them can. Yeah, so, the, so what I'm hearing is the main difference is, or one of the main differences is that um, an off-grid inverter, so all these inverters we're talking about, if you want to go completely off the grid, can have power from a generator and things like that. Yeah. Now, um, what else? Like, because if I get say like a Sungro or a Goodwee, can I cut the grid forever and just run off my three thousand watts? Like, will that or my five thousand watts? As long as I don't exceed that, am I gonna? Yeah. Is that gonna work for me? Because um, that could be a really cheap way to go off. Could the, be, yeah. Go um, off the grid. And I mean. It's probably not a good idea. Theoretically, maybe, and I think there's probably people out in the world yeah. who are actually doing it, um, but they're not designed that way. They're not. They're designed to be grid connected. They're called grid connected hybrid inverters mm -hmm. because um, they do need the grid to come back every so often. They need a majority of the time they do need to be on the grid, and mm -hmm. that's how they operate best. Um, they're not designed to be used off the grid. Um, there's there's honestly hundreds of parameters within an off grid inverter that keep it stable mm -hmm. um, when used with no Mm -hmm. uh, incoming stable power mm -hmm. supply. Um, so they aren't built into those inverters, all those parameters. They're just built to be on the grid and supplement power um, and give battery power or blackout protection power every now and again. Mm -hmm. So your off-grid inverters are gonna have a lot more programming in there yeah. to make them more stable for different inputs yeah. and they don't need to reference the grid ever. Yeah. Um, and when, what they can maintain a, power, a stable power supply yeah. from the battery and the solar and the wind and the yeah, generator. Um, whereas your other grid connected inverters can supply your home during a back blackout, maybe even for a yeah. day or yeah. two or-, or, yeah. or They can go on for, for a while. I mean, we've never really tested how long they can go for. Mm -hmm. um, but they do want the grid to come back eventually. 
Yeah. Fantastic. Now let's quickly look at what, uh, which of these inverters are off-grid compatible. Cool. So Go from the start again. Good yeah. we? Uh, no. Not and well. Sungro? No. Thronius? No. SMA? Uh, SMA do have a nice off-grid inverter. Yes. But not this one. Not yes, the Sunny, not the sunny Boy, Boy storage. storage. Um, and that's probably a good example of mm -hmm. off-grid. Like yeah. Sunny, SMA created this particular um, battery inverter to be used on the grid. And they've, they've got a killer mm -hmm. inverter in the sunny island and that's fully to be used off the grid. But if you look at them, they just look completely different. They're yeah. completely different. Well, one's black and white and one's yellow. We'll yeah. put them up on the screen. Um, they look similar shape, slightly yeah. different color, but um, and in terms of what they do, they're both battery inverters, but one's off-grid yep. compatible. Correct. And that's the yellow one. That's the Sunny Island, whereas the where SMA's black and white Sunny Boy storage, which we're talking about now, doesn't have that same programming and stability to go fully off the grid. And uh, it's evidence to the fact that these massive companies like SMA release, release separate product lines yep. for those that will be on the grid and those that will be off the grid uh, in order to cater to both markets. It's, it is that different. Yep. Um, so while it might work, you probably want to invest in an off-grid inverter should you want to go completely off the grid or if you're even wanting to cut the grid, you know, some people are saying it's the that the end of the world's coming yeah. with COVID and all that sort of thing. With the off-grid inverter, you could switch the grid off and, and not have to not have to think about it yeah. anymore. Um, and then that leaves us with the Skybox. The Tesla Powerwall actually. Pa Powerwall. Um, I love the Powerwall's data sheet because it always says uh, all these amazing things, but um, I don't know. Honestly, the answer is a maybe. I, mean, I think people there are people out there using Tesla Powerwall's off the grid. Um, what makes you doubt the uh, spec sheet, Ross, of Tesla's spec? That's a bit. That's a big claim. Um, it just has a lot of uh, from from what I've heard feedback from people um, and the asterisks they've got around mm -hmm. the five kilowatt. You know, it's got this much capacity asterisk at twenty five degrees at three point three kilowatt charge slash discharge. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'd love to hear from people who are actually using Tesla Powerwalls off the grid and how well they go. Yeah, I, I haven't used one off the grid, so if it's working friggin' awesome, then good good on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think what you're getting at is that you know these companies bring out separate. Many companies yeah. bring out separate product lines for on the grid and off the grid. It's interesting. Tesla are saying they have one yeah. that uh, that essentially does both in that in that regard. So interesting. I mean, Skybox is similar. It does both. Yeah, it does both. So. Um, Skybox uh, used can be used fully off the grid. Mm -hmm. It's um it's actually designed more to be used off the grid, but can be used on the grid. Yes, which is why it's got such a, a high peak power. Why the peak power can last for so long, um, and as added bonus, it's also UPS compliant as well. So yeah, it does it all. Okay, cool. Well, uh, if you're using a Tesla off the grid, Ross hasn't seen it happen yet. Yeah, so, so, so show us. <laughs> uh, post your comments, send us a link, and we'd love to check it out, and we can maybe update in the next video. Very, very cool. Any other questions, Ross, or anything else you'd like to cover as um, part of No, I think that's pretty much it. It's just a matter of um, getting the right product for what you need. So mm -hmm. hopefully this video kind of helps separate those into what their capabilities are. Um, and yeah. Yeah, there's one final uh, ending, I guess, in terms of price, Ross. Uh, what are we, It's uh, what's the range in these products? Do we have just ballpark? It's a pretty big range. It's a pretty um, great range. So your Goodwin in the lower end um, might be to buy 1500 Two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. The Sangro um, similar pricing, all up to your Teslas and the Skybox at the more thirteen to fifteen k range. Yeah, so, so rated from a couple of grand. I mean, the Tesla includes the battery. And the Skybox does. And the Skybox so includes doing the battery. battery so, um, SMAs and Euphronius is put the. Uh, about around two and a half, three K right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge range in price. Yeah. So consider, uh, do you want your battery to power your house during a blackout? Because that's an uh, that's an add-on to pretty much all these products. They're all capable to do it, but uh, sometimes you need a separate box and that sort yeah. of thing. You're not just going to get yeah. your battery and have this capability. So uh, say you're looking at some of these products and you're shopping around, uh, ask questions about the blackout protection uh, side of things or the off-grid side of things and make sure that that's being included uh, when you're getting quotes and things like that. Um, and then now that you have an idea of what the difference between UPS and off-grid are in a range of these products, you're going to uh, spend quite a bit more as you move up the ranks with more blackout protection yeah all the way up to your off-grid systems that can run indefinitely off the grid very, very stably and they're made to do so. So work out where you wanna where you wanna end and work your way back from there. Yeah, perfect, sounds good. Wonderful. Uh, anyone who's got any off-grid systems, post us links in the comments to Facebook, uh, Instagram, we'll check them out. We'd love to see what you guys have set up. We, uh, um, we love off-grid, uh, a special off-grid power, been doing it for a while, which is why uh, Sky Energy, where we work, has developed Skybox over the past uh, a couple of years and we're really uh, excited to be telling you guys about it for the first time 
um, on our YouTube channel. So we'll put a link in the in the description, check it out if you wanna know more about going off the grid. Otherwise, post your installs and we'll check them out. Ask any questions below in the comments and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Take care.